So welcome everyone to our webinar all about how to transform your data visualizations with AI. Um, this webinar will be about an hour long and we are really excited to welcome you all here as we talk about um, how you can use AI to boost your data visualization skills. Um, my name is Annie and I will be your co-host here today. We also have Mafe here to lead the session. We work in the marketing and content team here at Flourish and we are so excited to have all of you here. But I'm going to hand over to Mafe to get started on how to transform your data visualizations with AI. Thank you, Annie. And as I said, we're in the chat. Welcome everybody to the session. We're super excited to have you. Um, just to clarify, this is a beginner-friendly session. We're not going to go into any advanced features for any of the tools. So whether you've used tools in the past or not, um, the session is for you, and hopefully you're, you're going to learn something, something new today. So this is a quick overview of the things we're going to be covering. Um, a bit of an introduction. I'm going to be walking you through some key concepts when we talk about AI. Then I ask the question as to whether AI is really that big of a deal. And then we're going to take a quick look at the tools landscape and the tools we're going to be working with today. And then we have five examples or five exercises of ways in which you can use AI to boost your charts, um, brainstorming chart ideas, creating accessible color palettes, generating coordinates for a map, pivoting and unpivoting data, and creating dummy data. And last but not least, of course, I'm going to do a recap and share some tips and tricks. And I will be stopping along the way to answer any questions that there are in the chat, but there also will be time at the very end. So don't, don't worry, don't panic. We'll try to cover as much ground as we can, but it's a long session, so let's get started. And let's begin with key concepts to know when talking about AI. So obviously there's like AI has been all over the news. If you've been reading or just connecting to the internet, you probably heard about it, but what really is AI? Well, artificial intelligence, it's simply a collection of technologies that allow computers to perform tasks considered to require human intelligence. It's really that simple. Now within AI, you may have also heard of this term machine learning. Machine learning is a type of AI technology that's made up of algorithms that are trained to find patterns in large amounts of data. And what's key about them is that they improve their performance over time based on the data they have, so they learn, which is quite a key concept to keep in mind because a lot of these tools are constantly evolving. The way they work today might not be the way they work tomorrow, so we all need to be on our toes and constantly testing um, and trying these tools again and again until we understand more how they work and see the results. Then we have generative AI or Gen AI, which is something that's been um, appearing on headlines quite a lot quite recently. And this is a type of AI and machine learning model that allows computers to generate new content based on input. So this is text, images, audio, um, anything really that you can imagine. And it's quite a powerful technology. And last but not least, we have LLMs, which stands for Large Language Models. And these are, again, AI models that are trained on vast text data for tasks like language generation and understanding. So this is what your tools like ChatGPT, Copilot, Gemini, um, previously BART, et cetera, are based on, right? It's the capacity that we have to have a conversation or so with these tools to actually feel like we're talking to them. So now that that's covered, we're going to be discussing a lot of or working with tools that are basically generative AI tools. That's the, the bulk of the session. And now you can see how that it's integrated within the AI context, sort of speak. Now, is AI really that big of a deal? We've all been hearing about it, but is it really that massive? Is it really that important? Well, data seems to suggest so. Um, this is a quick search from Google Trends data. And in the past five years, um, the interest on topics like artificial intelligence or the AI term have soared just in the last couple of years alone. And obviously that can be caused because of the launch of tools like ChatGPT or Google Spark Gemini, Microsoft's Copilot. So there's definitely interest in the web for these terms and these tools. And not only is there interest in the web, but there's also interest in the market. So according to Bloomberg Intelligence and Goldman Sachs, the AI industry could become a 1.3 trillion industry by 2032. So in less than 10 years, there could be a massive explosion in the value 
of this market. And these sources say that specialized generative AI assistance software will be the main driver. And these are tools, again, like the ones that we're going to be exploring today. Now, last but certainly not least, we are going to be talking about data visualization. So how is this affecting the field? Well, according to the Data Visualization Society State of the Industry Report, which they run every year, um, last year, a quarter of the respondents said that they have used AI um, tools in their work, which is quite remarkable given that it's the first year they asked this question. So already in just one year, a quarter of the people are using this in their practice. So that might give you a few hints as to where the technology is going, whether you can use it in your day-to-day -day work, and if it's worth hopping on the trend. Now, AI can help you improve your chart-making skills in many ways, but I'm, hi I'm highlighting these three, which is to boost your creativity, to simplify any processes and tasks, and it can work as an assistant. It can help you cover more complex topics or even learn new skills. Now let's take a look at the tools landscape. So today we're gonna be covering four tools. All the exercises that I'm gonna be showing are gonna be split into four results, one for each of the tools. Um, first, we have ChatGPT by OpenAI, MagicRide by Canva, Copilot by Microsoft, and Gemini, formerly Bard, by Google. And here I did a little comparison table for you guys, just so you can see um, how these tools are obviously comparing amongst each other and where some of the features and limitations that they all have. In terms of pricing, each of these have a free version. I'm not going to be working with any pro tools in the session. They're all going to be in their free version. Um, but each of them also have a pro version available um, with different pricings. In terms of features, I'm highlighting that ChatGPT has a marketplace available that you're able to create your own GPTs. And even there are some beta plugins with so a more customizable tool, which might be of interest for some of you who are more, um, I guess, attuned to perhaps developing or creating your own tools. Magic Ride in Canva. Um, one of the key features is that's integrated within all the Canva products. So you can access it from any document, any um, anywhere you, you are in Canva, really, you can simply access it. And it supports multiple languages, which is quite key. Then for Copilot, it's integrated similar to Canva, um, Magic Ride to Canva, to the Microsoft systems. It's connected to the internet, which neither GPT 3.5, which is the free version, neither Canva Write are. And it also supports image generation which neither ChatGPT in its free version nor Magic Write do. And then we have Gemini, um, which is integrated with the G Suite. It's also connected to the internet and it enables translation, which can be extremely helpful for certain projects like generating um, perhaps multiple titles for your charts or even the captions, anything you want really, that can be a really powerful feature. In terms of limitations, um, we all know that AI tools are still quite limited. They can be in inaccurate and they can even give us false results. So it's always important to have, you know, our critical thinking and to check any sort of responses that we get. Um, for ChatGPT, that can be one of the limitations as well as the fact that it's not connected to the internet. For MagicWrite, MagicWrite is not a chat interface. We're gonna explore all these tools in a second. So don't worry if you haven't heard of one of these or haven't used one of these, but basically Magic Ride is available in any Canva document, but also in any Canva file type. So even the social media assets, presentations, et cetera, you're able to call on Magic Ride, but there's not gonna be a chat going on, which sometimes can be a bit of a limitation, but you are able to get the results that compare to that of ChatGPT, Copilot, Gemini, and so on. Um, you do have character limits in the prompts. However, it's quite high. So you would only reach it if your prompts are extremely lengthy. And there are limited uses on the free plan. So that's something to keep in mind for sure. For Copilot, limitations are similar as well. There's a character limit in prompts. And the results often focus on processes rather than outcomes. So many times, and I'm gonna, gonna be covering this in the examples as well, um, Copilot will give you ways in which you can achieve a result rather than the expected result itself, no matter how many times you ask it to actually give you the, the final result, which if you're pressed for time, might not be what you're after, but um, good to keep in mind for sure. And for Gemini as well, inaccurate and prone to, act, to factual errors, that's common to any of the tools really. Um, there's limited control over generation style and the free tier uses an older model. So it's not as say, sleek or advanced as the paid versions are. And Gemini launched, I believe, last 
Friday. So I really had to update this whole presentation to cater to the new capabilities of the tool and I'm still discovering it. So um, keep that in mind as well, for sure. Now, one key thing to keep in mind about all of these tools is that these are probabilistic tools. That means that the results are basically based on whether they're going to be a good match to your prompt. And this changes over time because as I explained earlier, this, these tools are trained on models and they're constantly learning. So what they know one day, it's not the same as what they know the next day. This means that the same prompt may yield different results. And this happened to me prepping for the session. I run every single prompt at least five, six, seven times on all the tools. And every time I got a different result or I got the same result with perhaps a few different tweaks. So definitely something to keep in mind and don't, don't despair if you're going to be able to walk through it and unsort it as you go. But now, with that introduction and without further ado, let's get started. So the way in which I designed the session is that for each of the examples, we're going to have a specific task. So we're going to have a very clear goal that we're trying to achieve. And we're going to be using the AI-based tools to achieve that goal, of course. Then I'm going to show you how I engineer my prompts, the elements of that prompt, and there are common elements to all the prompts that I Thing you should be using in your own practice because they've proven to be quite effective to generating optimal results. And then we're going to compare the results for each of the tools and see how they um, performed. I'm just going to quickly check the chat in case there are any questions right now. And yes, the recording is going to be available at the end of the week because I can see somebody is asking about this, but it looks like everything is okay. So I'm just going to carry it. So the first use that we're going to be given AI-based tools in data visualization is to help us brainstorm ideas. So we have a very simple task, which is to come up with 10 ways to visualize data for a marketing campaign using Flourish. Now, this is the prompt that I've engineered. I need to work on a report for the latest marketing campaign we ran at my company. The metrics that I have are number of users acquired per channel, number of impressions on social media, Number of bounces, country for where, from where user, users visited us, total revenue for the period of time the campaign ran. And I'm asking to suggest 10 charts that I can build to present this data in a more engaging way. I'm going to be using Flourish as my go-to visualization tool to make, and so make sure to suggest charts that I can build there. Now, if we break this apart, and again, this is gonna be quite common on all the prompts that I'm gonna be showing. The first thing that I did is I provided my tool with context. I'm saying what I'm trying to do and what for. I'm working on a report on a marketing campaign. Then I provide metrics, variables, right? I'm going to give it the guidelines so it understands what type of charts are possible. If I don't give it any sort of con constraints or guidelines in terms of the data that I have, it can suggest charts that are not going to be possible because I don't have the data. So the more specific you can be in your prompt, um, it's going to be the best in terms of the results you're going to get. And then I specified the outcome that I want from this prompt, which is, in this case, a list of 10 charts that I can build to present this data. And last but not least, I give it a constraint, which is I'm going to be using Flourish. And um, beyond the obvious, uh, I added this element to the prompt because that way I was going to be able to tell whether the tools were actually accurate in the charts they suggest because I obviously know which tools or rather which templates are available in Flourish. So if they were to suggest say a Voronoi diagram, which is something we can't yet make at Flourish, I know that that is not really an optimal result to my question. So um, well, I'm going to be showing you this prompt live on the tools. I'm not going to be demoing all the examples live because the session would be very, very long, but I'm going to be demoing um, a couple and this is one of them. So I'm going to be opening all my tools. So here I have a window and I'm just going to close the sidebar here. Here I have my window with ChatGPT. Here I have a blank document within Canva for Magic Write. Here's my window for Copilot with a brand new um, chat. So it's a complete new topic. And here I have my window for Gemini in Google. So I'm just going to copy the prompt that I had. And I'm going to parse it on all the tools. And if you've never used these tools before, it's quite simple. You simply paste or type your prompt in the text box generally below. So in the case of ChatGPT, 
that's it. I'm going to wait until it generates that. For Magic Write, you would press slash and then access Magic Write on the Canva document. And here you're able to paste your prompt. So one quick thing to mention here with Magic Write, as I said, Magic Write is not a chat based tool. So the way in which you're going to get your results, it's a bit different from what you would get for the other tools. But again, results are quite good. So I would highly encourage you to give this a go if you are already a Canva user and are keen to um, make the most out of all the AI features. So I'm going to generate that response. In the meantime, I'm going to go to Copilot. And again, I'm going to paste that. And I'm going to go to Gemini and paste that as well. And let's see what I have. So starting with ChatGPT, I have the following list of chart types that is recommending me to create for my marketing campaign. We have a bar chart and it's telling me um, the type of information that I can showcase in this particular chart, either the users acquired per channel or the balances by channel, the line chart, trends of impressions over time, either daily or weekly, or the revenue over time as well. Pie chart for a distribution of my users acquired or by country, stack bar chart, area chart, comparison of impressions, social media, all good, scatter plot, relationship between impressions on social media and total revenue, core map, again, for geographic distribution, histogram, distribution of total revenue. This is interesting because actually Flourish doesn't have a histogram template, so this is not entirely accurate. Maybe you wouldn't be too fussed about it and you would think about either a way to create this in Flourish or another tool in which you can create the same chart type, but you have to keep in mind that it's not 100% accurate there. Funnel chart for conversion. Again, Flourish doesn't have a funnel chart template, so that's another thing to keep in mind. And a word cloud. Okay, so that's quite good. Out of the 10, we can see that two are not part of the Flourish um, offer of templates. So that's, again, something to keep in mind when um, assessing your results and whether you like the results or not. For Magic Write, we can see here that it gave me another 10 list of charts, bar chart, line chart, pie chart, map, stack bar chart, area chart, donut, bubble, horizontal bar graph, and word cloud. So very quick um, assessment here of the output, but already a bit more accurate than ChatGPT because at least I know that all the chart types are in theory possible within Flourish. So that's all good. And it also gives me a little explanation as to the things that I can create, or rather, what can I show with each of the chart types? So quite handy. Let's see what Copilot's doing. Okay, so Copilot needs time to render the response. So let's see what's saying. So far, bar chart to compare the number of users, line chart to show the trends of impressions on social media over time, pie chart, stack area chart, heat map. That's all good. Sangi diagram, radar chart and radial bar chart, that's all interesting. And as I said, Copilot, it's really a great tool for research because it always goes the extra mile to give you extra resources. And in this case, it's even giving me images to illustrate the type of charts that it's suggesting. So that can definitely be a bonus for you, or perhaps it's quite the opposite. I'll, I'll leave that to you. But all in all, except for the radial bar chart, I'd say that, yeah, these nine examples are definitely doable with Flourish, and maybe the radial bar chart can be done with hierarchy, but um, I'll, I'll leave that as an so-so. Let's see what Gemini did for me. Okay, 10 chart ideas. Bar chart usage acquired by channel, stack bar chart, social media impressions by platform, line chart, bounce rate over time, geographic map, area chart, scatter plot, pie chart, animated bar chart, heat map, an animated story for campaign highlights. You can use Flourish storytelling features to create an animated story that highlights the key findings of your marketing campaign. Well, that's quite interesting because it suggested a format rather than a chart type for the campaign. But um, as I mentioned, I've been running these prompts for at least two weeks prepping for the session. And it's the first time I've seen any of the tools actually highlighting the story capabilities from Flourish. So that's quite nice to see. Okay, and again, these were the results that I got back when I was prepping the slides, but you can see that they're roughly very, very similar. Um, 
sack bar charts. Again, for Magic Ride, I get my results on a Canva doc. Copilot consistently putting the images next to the outcomes. And Gemini, again, giving generally the format for them is the chart type and then the variable. And in this case, it gave me results with bullet points, which it didn't do this time. So again, shows it goes to show how the tools are going to render different responses every time you prompt them. Oh, I can see a question here. Which outcome should we trust as this AI may have the wrong output? Yeah, a thousand percent. So that's something obviously where each of us needs to play a role and we need to be critical as to what we're getting from the tools. And clearly when we're in this case, we're working with charts, um, with AI tools and charts. So we know our data in theory, we know where we want to go. So I'd say that use the tools as a guide and definitely as an accelerator um, in this case to get ideas, to maybe explore um, routes that you would generally go to or charts that you wouldn't necessarily go to immediately. But always, always, always keep your critical thinking sharp and you make the decisions and you choose which um, output is the best for you, the, the most suitable for your particular task. Um, so I hope that answers the, the question. Okay, the second example here is how to create accessible color palettes for our charts using AI tools. So once again, my task is to create or to get a colorblind safe palette for a chart. Um, this can be particularly useful for those of you who may not be part of a company or an organization with a very clear or distinct um, branding guidelines. So you have maybe the freedom to create your own palettes and you're keen to abide by accessibility, which we love here at Flourish. So this can be a really cool way to test the tools and again, to see the different results. So for this particular exercise, the prompt that I created is the following. Create a palette of five distinct colors along with a sixth shade of gray that adheres to accessibility guidelines. These colors will be utilized in an area bump chart. Provide the hex codes for the colors. Now let's break that down. My desired outcome is a color palette. My constraints in this case are that I need five colors. So I'm asking for five categorical hues with a sixth color that's actually a shade of gray. And that's going to be to um, de-highlight some areas of my chart. And all of these colors need to adhere by accessibility guidelines. I'm giving it context by saying, where am I going to be using these colors? It's an area bump chart. So it should ideally interpret, obviously, needs for a chart or how area bump charts perform. And they have areas that overlap between the others. They have opacity. So it should take all of these um, pieces of information into consideration. And last but not least, I'm giving the output format, which in this case is hex codes. So I need hex codes. I could have asked for RGB codes or um, any other color format that you um, are used to, but this was the one that I, I required. And here are the results. This is what ChatGPT gave me. So we can see that it's quite acceptable, actually. And I tested all of these against accessibility tools. Some perform slightly better, so, and we're going to notice that immediately. This one performed quite nicely. We have our output in the correct format, which is five distinct colors and my shade of gray. That's all looking nicely. Magic Ride gave me this hues. And again, similarly, I noticed this weird trend where I was getting a yellow or an orange shade alongside with a blue and a green and sometimes the red. Like these were quite common colors to get in all the permutations that I ran. Now for Magic Ride, I would contest this yellow here. It doesn't really work that well with the white background. But again, all of these pass the accessibility test, even though maybe some of the colors are not my personal preference. For Copilot, again, quite similar. If we run that again, we see the yellow, the orange, the green, the blue, and maybe a shade of red. Quite similar here. Um, this is one of the most contrasted color palettes of the bunch. We can see how they're like more saturated and brighter, even though the opacity on all the charts um, are it's the same. And last but not least, this is what Gemini generated. Um, now, with Gemini, something quite interesting is that it provided resources on how to check for accessibility and how to um, test for accessibility in your charts. So beyond just the output, it actually shared some 
handy resources for me. Now, keep this image in mind because once again, to bring the point home that these tools are designed to get better with time, this is what uh, Google Bar generated for me just a couple of weeks ago before they launched Gemini. I tried this, I cannot tell you how many times. I think I run this prompt like five, six, seven times with, with Bard. And it didn't matter what I did. It was it would never gave me a darker shade of, uh, shade of gray to actually visualize on a white background. The contrast was just all over the place. And again, if we compare that to this result, which already is quite usable and functional, that goes to show how these tools are in constant development and how you just need to be on your toes and testing them again and again, because they are improving and getting better. Okay, before I go for exercise number three, I'm gonna take a quick look at the chat, just in case there are any questions. Let's see. Um, develop this in chat GPT. Okay, I think this is all good. For accessibility test tools, I think Annie can help with that over the chat because we have an, a whole blog on accessibility and with the recommendations. So I will either go back to that question later or um, Annie can take care of that over the chat. But seeing as there are no, did you think? Oh, do you think it would have helped to include the white background in the prompt? Uh, yes, 100%. That's something that I didn't do in the prompt and actually didn't do it even in the reruns. But looking back into it, that's definitely a learning point to add as much context again to my prompt so it understands how they're going to perform. So yeah, definitely that's something that I would um, that I would change. Thank you so much for that question. Okay, let's go for exercise number three, which is how to generate coordinate pairs for a map. Now, the task is that I'm going to be working on a map, but I don't have the precise coordinates for the locations that I need to show. Very important point here, the precise location, it's not important, but I need a list of coordinate pairs. Before I go on with the prompt, this is super, super key. We have many different types of maps out there that we can create for our projects. Point maps or locator maps are mostly useful because they show precise locations. Um, by any means, not endorsing that you guys create fake locations for, for a specific map. But if you need a point map for a particular project and the exact positioning of the points, it's not of essence because maybe you want to show density or maybe you simply want to showcase um, different points in, you know, in, in a country and you just want to distribute them, then this task is going to be super handy. But if you really pre like require the precise location, obviously don't go and generate um, false points. That's definitely not the point of the session. Now, this is the prompt that I engineered, and this is for a very particular use case. Um, I'll cover that in a second. But I need to generate coordinates in a latitude and longitude format in decimal degrees for each state in the United States of America. The requirement is that these points should sit geographically at the centroid of each state. The result should have the following headers, state name, FIPS, lat, long, where the state name is the name of the state, FIPS is the two-letter code of each state, the lat is the latitude in decimal degrees, and the long is the longitude in decimal degrees. Now, my clear desi desired outcome is the coordinates in a latitude and longitude format, so not one single field, but rather two separate outputs in decimal degrees, because we know that coordinates come in different formats. I need it in this specific one for each state in the USA. And then my constraint is that I want this to be at the centroid of each state. That basically means that geographically, they should be in the middle of the state, roughly. I added that constraint because I could have gone online and just find maybe latitude and longitude for the capital of each state, but that defiled the point. I wanted to generate specific coordinates with a particular um, requirement, which in this case is that, that they sit in the middle of the state. And then I'm specifying how I want the format of my output. And so much so that I'm giving it the name of each of my columns and what should be inside each of the columns. Now, having tried this um, multiple times, this area, it's optional. I got positive results with all the tools without, with and without adding this extra bit. Personally, I like to over explain myself to these tools. I'd rather be extra clear than be even the slightest of 
you know, vague. So I'd rather keep this in my prompt. But if you're struggling with space or if your prompt is already super long and you need to cut characters, um, this is not going to make the biggest difference. Um, one more element that you can add to your prompt in this or in any case where you're generating data is that you can give it the format type. So you can ask for a CSV type file or a JSON file or a table. And we're going to be looking into this um, a bit further down in the session. But in the meantime, let's compare the results. This is what all the tools generated for me. Again, I use the exact same query in all the tools, and we're going to compare the results in this handy dandy Flourish map. So this is what ChatGPT generated for me. Again, looks quite good to me. The points, I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty as to whether they are exactly in the middle of the state, but it looks okay. It fits what I needed, and I got my coordinate pairs just as I needed them to plot onto the map. For Magic Bride, again, quite similar. Um, you know, how well this technique works for points outside the US? Yes, it works a charm for um, other countries. Um, I'll reply to this question in, in a minute. I'm going to finish with this, but I'll give you tips on how to achieve this with other countries as well. Um, again, Magic Ride generated almost the same points with a little bit of offset here, here, and here. If I turn ChatGPT off, if I want to get extremely pesky, I can say that maybe this is not a great positioning for the centroid in Hawaii because it's not even inland, but I'm not going to be that person today. Copilot generated only this many coordinate points. I faced quite a few issues with getting all the characters, um, rather, sorry, all the output, the amount of characters it was giving me. It didn't generate all of them. So this wasn't, this was the least optimal result, let's say. Um, so something to keep in mind. But maybe if I rerun the the command in two weeks' time, it's going to do um, a perfect job. So again, who knows? You really need to keep testing these tools. Then we have Gemini here performing um, quite well as well. And comparing it with Bard, a little bit of upsetting there as well. And keeping in mind that these two tools are both from Google, I thought it was quite interesting to see the, um, the disparity. Okay, grand. So to answer the question of how well this technique works for points outside of the US, I've tested this with different locations in Europe and it works as well. A couple of tips that I can share is obviously to always um, specify the format. So say that it's decimal degrees, split them into two columns, loud and long, and then you can either give it different constraints. So for instance, if you're generating points in the UK, you can say, generate points um, within a 60 kilometer um, radius and it's going to, in theory, um, spread them out. You can say generate points around the London area. So you give it a geographical constraint and generally the tools understand that you're talking about a certain area and they're able to perform tasks with, with that information. Um, oddly enough, the best outcome I've gotten has been when I've asked for random coordinate within a specific um, territory. So say generate 100 random coordinate pairs within the UK. And I've gotten a very good distribution alongside all the map rather than having them all concentrated in a specific region in the south or in the north. Um, maybe at the end of the session, I can have some more time and I can demo a couple of this um, if that's of interest. Okay, pivoting and unpivoting data. And this is probably going to be the longest demo, so hold on tight. But I think it's one of the most useful ones to demonstrate today. Before I move along, um, all of the examples that I've shown, you're able to replicate results. You're able to get the same outcome using other tools, of course. You can use code. You can use Python. You can use R. You can um, Google online like or just search online for resources that allow you to generate these results. The point of using AI tools is to do things quicker um, when you don't have the technical capacity to perhaps do something with more complicated tools. This is how they facilitate you in that in that process. Pivoting and unpivoting data, it's something you can do within Flourish. It's something that you can do in Google Sheets, Excel, in any spreadsheet program, but also you can do it, again, Python, R, all of these coding languages. However, if you don't have the time, if you don't have the technical skills, AI tools can actually help you a lot to achieve a desired result, which is why we're covering that in this session. Bit of a disclaimer there. 
Now, um, the task in this case is to wrangle an existing data set and to get it on the right format for three different Flourish templates, specifically LineBurPy, LineChartRaced, and the Sankey template. So for those of you who are not that familiar with Flourish, Flourish has multiple templates within its libraries, and each template has a different data format as a requirement. And this is because the data is, a di it creates a dialogue between the different functionalities within each template. So because they perform different tasks, the data cannot be the exact same. What that means is that there's no one size fits all within Flourish. You need to adjust your data to each specific template. And this, it's quite simple to do. Sometimes it takes a little bit more time, but with these tools, you can actually um, shortcut a lot of the work. So this is the sample data that we're going to be working with. It's a very, very common data format. We have our countries in one single column, isocodes in a separate column, years, our values are all production, and then we have the region to which each country belongs. And here I'm highlighting that all of these records are for a single country. All of these records are for a separate country. This is what we would call a long data format because it grows in rows rather than in columns. For a line chart within Flourish, we would need the data to be in the following format. The years would have to be in a single column. And then each separate column after that is um, a country with all the values for each of the years. So we would have to go from this format to this format. And this is what we call a white data set because it grows more in the number of series that it has than the number of years that it has. For line chart race, which is another of our um, templates, quite popular, we need quite the opposite. We need all of our countries in a single column. The code is completely optional, but I have it here. And then we need a column for each of the years where we fill all the remaining values um, with our series values, which in this case is oil production. And last but not least, for a Sankey diagram, we need, once again, a completely different um, format in which we need to gather all of our the elements that come from the source node to the target node, and then we aggregate the values. So in this case, we're even ignoring the years. We're only selecting one year, and we're ignoring the codes. And we're aggregating all the values depending on the region they belong to. So you can see how this can be quite the task. And now I'm going to show you how these tools can actually help you simplify this um, a bunch. OK, before I demonstrate this. These were the results that I got um, after running this quite a few times. Overall, ChatGPT is a tool that performed the best because I never hit a character limit, neither with the data that I was inputting, nor with the output that it was giving me. So for the three, um, for the three chart types, it worked like a charm. And I had to do some adjustments to the problem that happens all the time. And sometimes the output wasn't ideal. I had to split columns in Excel, so on and so forth, but overall the best performing tool so far. Magic Ride by Canva also performed quite well with slight prompt adjustments and slight data cleaning. So I had to crop um, a few headers here and there, but overall it performed um, really well. With Copilot, I hit uh, character limits twice. So I didn't get a complete output on neither of my first two tasks. And for the Sankey, it didn't satisfy my needs. It didn't create a um, usable data format that I needed for Flourish. So that's hence the, the little X. And for Gemini, once again, I hit a character limit with the first two tasks. So line bar pi, line chart race. And with the Sankey, it performed really nicely. And once again, for comparison, in the past with Bard, uh, Bard didn't perform any of the tasks to my standards or to what I needed them. So once again, to just make the case for the tools um, improving and constantly changing. So keep keep testing them. But um, now let's go and take a look at the prompts. The first one for line bar pi is, I will provide you with a data set. I need to transform it so that the years are all in a single column and then each country is a separate column. The values will be the old production, ignore the region and the code columns. Here's the data. Let's see how that performs. So I have my data set right here. I'm going to do this only on ChatGPT for interest of time. But we're going to paste the prompt. I'm going to go here, copy my data, paste my data, and return. 
Okay, I'm gonna stop this because I ran into this issue in the past. Um, I hadn't run into this issue before, actually. I run into it twice today, so I'm just gonna walk you through it. What's What this is doing is telling me how to do it in Pandas, which is a Python library, and that's exactly what I don't want because I want ChatGPT to do the heavy lifting for me. So in order to fix that, I'm simply going to tweak my prompt a little bit, and I'm going to say, um, right at the end, return the pivoted data set, no code snippets. And that should do it. There we go. So again, um, do establish a dialogue with your tool if they are chat bases. Like do um, give it input, give it feedback, say this didn't work, you didn't perform the tasks to my expectation, or it almost worked, but you failed here. All of that helps the tool improve and it also helps the tool understand the requirements that you have as a user better. And it may sound a bit dumb because obviously these are, they're not people clearly, but again, having a report with the tool is actually really useful and it does improve the output. I mean, you can see the complete difference from what I was getting before to what I'm getting right now. So having all my data here, I'm going to copy it straight from ChatGPT, and I'm going to go into Flourish, select one of my templates, and we're going to test this as a line chart. I replace all my data, and let's see. There we have it. Completely workable, usable data set that I can directly input into Flourish and get on with the rest of my tasks. Um, how do you recommend using these methods considering data security? Yes, this is quite interesting. So obviously I will never ever recommend anybody, sorry, context, somebody in the chat is asking for um, data security and privacy. All the examples that I'm running here are obviously for non-sensitive data. Like this is data that I gathered from our world in data. So these are public data sets and nothing that would jeopardize identity or the security of anybody. Um, Personally, when using these tools, if I'm ever dealing with sensitive data, I would never input it into the tool. I would use dummy data or proxy data, and then I would work, how can I replicate the same result with other tools? So in those cases where you, where you can't actually parse data to the tools because of data security issues, I would encourage you to use the tools as an assistant. So ask them, how can you actually perform the same job, but do it in a secure environment? So in that case, it might involve you learning a new skill or, you know, working your way on Excel or Google Sheets, whatever tool of your choice. And you can just ask it, my data looks like this. How can I get it to look like that? And then you just translate that into your own environment. Um, but by all means, look into the security, look into um, the limitations of these tools and whether you should be using it for, for that type of endeavors. Moving on, we're going to be performing the same task, but in this case with line chart race. So it's pretty much the same with the exception that I need to flip it and I need all my countries in one column and all my years as the remaining columns. So once again, I'm going to be doing the same, return the full data set and no code snippets. And here's Here's the data. And I'm just going to grab all of that again, paste. And while that works, I'm just going to quickly check the chat to see if there are any questions. And using this method, okay, security. Amazing. Okay. Amazing. I don't think there are any key questions here. So going out. Okay. What's happening here? Oops. Okay. So something happened there. I'm not quite sure what. 
but just because I'm running out of time, I might just show you, and you'll have to trust me on this one, that it actually performed the task successfully when I tried it earlier today. So, sorry, let me go back to this one. There we go. So again, in the interest of time, I'm going to skip that, even though that was definitely not the output that I was expecting. But in the past, it has performed the task correctly. And this um, particular data set works perfectly for line chart race. I am going to be demoing the Sankey because there's a quite an interesting um, learn lesson to be learned there. So I'm going to move on quickly over there. And very quickly, here we have the prompt for the Sankey pivoting. So as I mentioned earlier, this is the most complex data set that we are able to input into into the tools because we need like the output, the output is quite different from the input. Um, I'm going to be running a shortened version of this prompt, but the most important here is that up to this point, I've been doing single prompts that have a single output, but you're able again to build rapport with your tool and you're able to give it context in one message and then ask it for you know comprehension. I'm saying, I need to transform a data set into specific format for a Sankey diagram Tell me that you understand and you know what Sankey diagrams are and that you com like completely understand what I'm asking for. It replied, yes, I understand, carry on. Then I gave it the sample data set. And then I actually asked with that data set I gave you, turn it into the following format with a source and an entity, sorry, with a source and a target column and then the values. However, you are also able to do that in a shortened version in a single paragraph. And that's what I'm going to be demoing once again in the interest of time. So quickly going over to ChatGPT over here. And you can see that I run this uh, in the past. Okay, return the data and copying my, just making sure that I have the right data set complete. Copy that and paste it. Okay, grand. This is actually very, very handy. Perfect. So up until this point, we'd be getting tables, which are very useful, and I can immediately add them to Flourish. I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to say um, return the same data, but as a table, and it should fix it. But if it doesn't, I'm going to show you how you can just use, use this yourself because um, it's quite a useful skill to have. Just going to quickly copy this and we can see that it generated a CSV. This is all separated by, um, by commas. It could have been separated by a different value. But if I quickly go to any spreadsheet um, that you have, you simply paste this and I'm going to run a split command by typing split, not split, but split selecting my, my cell and then selecting the delimiter. In this case, the comma. And if I do that, it splits the values that it generated. And I can copy this and paste it into Flourish and it works a charm. This is super, super common to get, um, especially in ChatGPT. Sometimes you're going to get your, your data in a CSV format rather than a table. Maybe you want it in a CSV format rather than a table. So it's just useful to know how you can format that and turn it into the actual format that you need for your um, charts. So very quickly, I'm going to paste this into Flourish to show whether it works or not. I'm going to clear my sheet, paste my data. Voila, I have a workable Sankey. That's not very interesting because everything is sorted. So I'm just going to do it by name. So we get some notes and links moving. But there we go. I mean, it performed the task perfectly and I have a usable data set for this specific chart type exactly as I requested. Okay, I'm gonna brace through the last bits because we are running out of time. But another great use for AI tools in this case is to generate dummy data. Now, you may not ever have a need to generate dummy data, and that's amazing, in which case maybe this example is not gonna be super useful. But for those of you who need to create um, perhaps sample dashboard or show a proof of concept to a customer or you're working on charts, but you are not given the final data just yet, but yet you need to like work on, on, on a project, generating dummy data might be a lifesaver because you would be able then to populate your charts with something that resembles the real data that you might be getting in the future. So 
the task here is to generate dummy data to create demo charts. Um, and I have two examples. The first one is how to generate dummy data for a projected, um, sorry, for the revenue of a company and then project the revenue for X amount of years. And that looks like so. I need to create a set of dummy data. I needed to create a set of dummy data for me. I like a data set with a company revenue data on a monthly basis going from January 2022 to January 2024. And then the projected revenue going from January 2024 to December 2030. So six years worth of projected data. The date format should be day, month, and year separated by hyphens starting on the first day of the month. And the data should be in an Excel format. So I'm expecting again a table in theory. Now, these are the results that I got. And this is super important to keep in mind because obviously synthetic data, it's not real data and it sometimes doesn't look real. Um, ChatGPT, again, my comment here is that it's not the most organic looking data set, but it fits the bill. It did exactly what I asked. It gave me like a very steady growth of this company, um, which is not realistic. Like this is not how companies usually perform, but for all intents and purposes, it can be a usable chart for my demo. Yep. Magic Ride, um, again, perform um, the task really well. Once again, not the most realistically looking chart. Again, it's like I'm not quite sure what's going on here with this almost 90 degree performance increase. But again, it generated the data in a format that I needed it to, and it performed quite well. Copilot, I ran into a lot of issues with the character limit and it didn't perform, it didn't give me the data in a format that I could use. And whenever it did, it simply generated too little data to actually give, um, create the illusion that I was trying to do, like the whole project, project revenue for that particular company. Hence the little um, no internet connection um, give here. Um, so it didn't work for me in that occasion, but I might give it a go in the future and see whether it works um, down the line. And then Gemini, once again, gave me, um, I don't want to say a more organic looking data set, but it has some dips here and there, which is closer to the reality. But again, a very, very pronounced growth in this fictional company that I um, ask it to generate revenue for. Um, and again, to compare once again, what Bard had performed in the past, it gave me the revenue in a more organic looking way. I would have this more as something that I would see in reality if looking into performance market data, but then the revenue was completely um, a steady increase in a very straight line. So I didn't quite like the, the result there, but um, something to keep in mind. Now for round two, I'm generating specific data for a specific chart type. Um, yeah, organic data, that's a term that I, I use, but it might not be even technical, but it's just data that looks actually a bit more real. So here I would be expecting perhaps a more a, a wiggly line rather than this very clear straight line that's projecting onto the future. So, um, or here, like this dips, we, we humans understand that these things don't look too real. And that's the issue sometimes with dummy data, that it looks fake, that it looks like it's made up because it is. Um, and the challenge here, I think with the prompts is to get a more realistic looking chart. And we do that by refining our prompts or by adding some more um, nuances to, to the, the prompts that we're creating. I've tested this with statistical terms and talking about whether I want something to be, um, you know, uh, with a positive correlation or a negative correlation or evenly distributed or not. And I've gotten better results by adding a little bit more of complexity to, to the queries. But because this is an introductory session, I wanted to keep it beginner friendly and you are able to get good results even with just um, a bit more basic prompts as well. Um, moving on to round two, in this case, the goal is to create um, a tree map and I need dummy data for that tree map. And I'm giving a bunch of context here, which is I'm working on a net zero report. I need to create dummy data to visualize um, in charts. I need a data set for specifically for a tree map that showcases the investment a government has made in different sectors to reach net zero. And I need to show the, allocace, the allocation of resources or investments in different sectors related to net zero policies. And with that, I ask it to all the tools, the same prompt, same query. And these are the resulting tree maps with the DOMI data generated. 
this is what ChatGPT um, created for me, or rather the data that it created for me that I then plotted into Flourish. This is what Magic Ride created, way less chunks than, again, to visualize that, to see that. And ChatGPT, so this is quite a good looking chart. I have enough sections within my tree map to visualize everything. So I quite like it. It looks very, um, it looks like any tree map that I would like to, to showcase. It looks very, very standard, uh, exactly for what I needed. Magic Ride again, fewer chunks. Copilot as well, fewer chunks. Gemini, closer to ChatGPT, more chunks than Magic Ride and Copilot. And Bard in its moment gave me a weirdly nested data set that then resulted into this. So I wasn't quite happy with the result, but still gave me a usable data set, which is the, the whole point of the exercise. Okay. Goodness, I have two minutes, um, which means that I do have time to show you the one last thing that I didn't include in the index, but it's a bit of a bonus because it's not possible with all the tools, um, but it's to generate all text, which again can be super handy if you're dealing with accessibility constraints and if you need to add all text to your charts or screen reader descriptions to make your charts accessible for visually impaired people. Um, you are able to do this by at by inputting an image into the tools. Now, this is only possible with Copilot and Gemini on their free plans at the moment. So I'm going to be demonstrating that right now. You can see here in Copilot that I have a little add image button for contrast. I don't have the same in ChatGPT. If you have ChatGPT4, I believe you're able to do it, but I'm dealing with 3.5 here, so I don't have that possibility. Um, again, Copilot on its free plan, I click on add image upload from device and I have my chart open right here and I am going to ask it to generate a generate alt text for this chart um highlighting the main insight I'm going to copy that to paste that into Gemini in a second. And let's see what I get. And the one annoying bit from Copilot is that you actually need to be in here to get the response. If I move away, um, it sometimes stops generating the, the answer. So something to keep in mind as well. If it's taking too long, I'm going to quickly try and see if Gemini is willing to do that a bit faster. So, basing and submitting. Okay, grand. So, here we go. I got line graph showing a sharp increase in the number of asylum seekers in Europe, reaching over 12 million in 2022. This represents a 77% increase from the previous year. The text also mentions Russia's invasion of Ukraine as a possible contributing factor. And if we look at the image, that is pretty much exactly what this chart is depicting. So again, um, quite a useful tool to keep in mind in your, in your tool shed. Um, this can save you lots of time whenever you're generating screen reader descriptions, which we highly encourage in Flourish, as we have lots of accessibility features available for you, um, or even captions for, um, I guess, social media, if you're dealing with that. And here we can see what Copilot did for me. The chart depicts a significant increase in the number of asylum seekers in Europe. Amazing. So quite similar, very um, comparative as well. So overall, um, really good tools. Amazing. Um, I know that we're overrunning, but I think we got there in the end. Very, very quickly, I'm going to go over recap and tips. So we are not left cut short. Um, three takeaways really from this session. The first one is that you do need to choose the right tool for your task. Um, I'm showing you four, but there are many, many, many out there. Give them all a go. Try them out for your different purposes. And especially, you don't have to marry to a single tool. You can use them for different intents and purposes. Um, so. Just give them all a go and see which one fits your needs the best. Um, the second one, focus on your prompts. I cannot emphasize this enough. The quality of your result is heavily reliant on your prompt. So sharpen those prompt engineering skills. And as I said, um, my magic formula is context, clear constraints, 
examples, and a desired outcome. And with those four elements, um, and maybe a few tweaks here and there, your results should be grand. And last but not least, iterate and experiment. This is a blooming space. Test different tools, run your prompts multiple times, play around, and especially just like, you know, breathe in. Sometimes results are not going to be optimal. That just gives you an opportunity to, you know, keep learning and to understand how the tools work the best. And I know there's a lot of controversy around AI and whether it's we're doomed or, or very fatalistic thoughts. I personally don't think so, but I really like this quote from Karim Lakami, professor at Harvard Business School, which is that AI won't replace humans, but humans with AI will replace humans without AI in the workplace. And the idea here is that, again, these tools are not going to replace creativity or critical thinking. If anything, we need to be more sharp with our critical thinking skills and we need to be more creative to give them use. But they are a big accelerator. So I would encourage you to um, embrace them, to use them, to give them a go. And in the field of data visualization, they're looking really good and very promising. So um, definitely try them out.